So today we are going to start with the Newton's laws of motion. As we all know that Newton gave three laws for the motion. motion. Uh, Newton uh, laws uh, uh, actually deciphers the already known physical quantities. Before Newton, force was not defined. Force velocity, acceleration, momentum, impulse, force, all were mixed up and it, uh, it was Newton who separated all these momentum and impulse, force, acceleration, these have been separated by the Newton's laws of motion. So we know that Newton has given three laws and the first, uh, all the three laws are known to us from school days uh, and uh, we will find that the, what is Newton's first law give us, basically Newton's first law defines the force that what is a force uh, uh, and the second law which gives us a, a idea of the measurement of the force and uh, also second law gives uh, it relates to two unknown quantities mass and force which are two unknown physical quantities this is the beauty of the Newton's law that the two unknown quantities are related by one equation mass was undefined force was undefined but both are related by one single equation and uh, that is uh, by the Newton's second law and third law gives us the uh, reaction of the force so we start with the Newton's first law. Everyone knows Newton's first law from school days. I will write the statement of the Newton's first law and then we will discuss uh, about the Newton's first law. So the first law, the statement of the first law is every body, every body remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line. unless acted upon by by external force so here we have three things to understand what is the rest what is in form motion what is external force so to understand this uh, state, rest, state of rest and form motion, we will do some experiment. Okay. So state. <coughs> Suppose we have uh, the, we have two observers. One of the observer is on a on the earth. Suppose uh, this observer. And here there is a tree here. Tree. And suppose there is a stone line here. And this is the observer A. And suppose this is the reference of frame related to the earth. An observer is standing on the earth. He has a tree and there is a stone. And now there is another observer. This is the train. 
moving with constant speed. Okay. So this is a train. Train car moving with constant speed and a person, an observer is standing in the is in the train. Suppose this observer is called as let us call as B, this other as A. <coughs> now, now suppose uh, both and uh, there is a ball here. In the, this is the train. This is the ball. Now the train is moving with constant speed say it's B. Relative to now suppose uh, both the observer A and B have mobiles with them and they are in communication with each other with a mobile phone. Uh, suppose the mobiles are of Android, Android type so that they can exchange photos also. Now, the observer A uh, uh, tells B that I am at rest and you are moving with constant speed B. Uh, you are moving with constant speed U as well as the ball. Uh, suppose the ball is uh, called C. Okay, the ball is uh, known as C. Suppose it is called as C. <coughs> so for the observer A, the man B and the ball C is being moving with constant speed V. Now the same statement will be given by B. He says, no, I am as at rest, but you are, you and the stone and the tree are moving with constant speed, speed B in a straight line. Now, in order to prove his point, A, in order to prove his point that I am at rest and you are not at rest, he performs a experiment and that he throws a ball vertically up and catches it back and say that since, since I am at rest the ball falls on my hand vertically down had I been moving, the ball would not would have either go, not be in my hand, either go this way or that way. So he performed an experiment and he also performed another experiment. That's a look. When I am at rest, suppose he has a pendulum with he hangs a pendulum here with his hand, and so that the pendulum is at vertically down. So he has performed he has performed two of experiment. One is that he has a pendulum which hangs vertically down, throws a ball up, catches it back, and this is to prove that I am at rest and you are moving. The same experiment will perform. The same experiment B will try to do. He will throw a ball and the ball goes up, returns back to the same point. He also hangs up pendulum here and find that the pendulum lies vertically down. So you say, oh no, I am at rest, you are moving. And A says, the no, I am at rest, you are moving. So which one is at rest and which is an motion? It all depends upon the system of reference frame from which there you are measuring. If the observer is he on this this earth, he thinks himself to be at rest, and the observer in the train also thinks himself to be at rest. So the state of rest and state of motion are the two states of a, two mechanical states of a body. Body can either be in either the rest or of uniform motion. So we can conclude that we can conclude. Uh, okay, we can conclude that a body can be in 
either of the two mechanical states at rest or uniform motion. No one can be uh, <coughs> can judge that whether which one is correct. It means that uh, the judge is where the judge is for 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 a judge. If the judge sits here, for him this is the motion. If the judge sits here, this is the motion. So the, uh, you cannot judge between the two. No mechanical experiment can prove which one is at rest and which one is motion. So it all depends upon the reference frame from which the things are being measured, things are being observed. So if you observe from one reference frame, that can be at rest, measured from another frame of reference, which is moving with constant speed, that can be of uniform motion. So the, if we, we concluded that a body can be in either the two mechanical states, no mechanical experiment can disprove this, and which, and prove that which one is at rest or which one is at motion. So now, next. Now suppose uh, it means uh, 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 the next part of the uh, uh, statement was that the body may either be either at rest or motion unless acted upon by some external force. It means force is that physical quantity which produces a change in the state mechanical state of the body so we can say that a body cannot change its mechanical state by itself so this is a property of a body not to change its mechanical state by itself and this property is called its laziness or inertia so the body can be either in the two mechanical state or two inertial states <coughs> A body cannot change its mechanical state by itself. So, uh, 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 a body can be either in the inner, it is it's the property of the body, inertness, laziness, not to change by itself is a property of a body, and this property is called inertia. So, inertia can be of two types inertia of number one rest or of motion this we can we also can observe we observe daily in our daily life that suppose <coughs> suppose the man is an observer is in the train it is moving constant speed In the speed cost moving with constant speed. If, if, if this <coughs> for a person who is standing here on the earth, this is moving with constant speed. For him, suppose this is A and this person is B. For A, B is moving with constant speed. The train and the man B, if this is the B, this is also moving with constant velocity. Everything in this inside the train because this is the ball it's also moving with the same velocity b so everything is moving with constant velocity now you apply a change what change means you apply some external force that external force produces the ch change in the moment mechanical state means the velocity is changed from b it increases from b to v plus say delta v So if this, it means you have applied some external force according to this first law that mechanical state can be changed only by external force. Now you have applied external force on this train. 
Its velocity, as a result, its velocity changes from d plus delta v. It means this uh, 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 here, it's uh, this portion. This portion is uh, uh, the upper portion of the body is moving the velocity v, but this portion, which touches the ground, has a velocity v plus delta v due to the friction. The uh, it's uh, feet will move forward with v plus delta v. As a result, this portion go, goes here and this portion goes here and uh, but the upper portion has the same velocity v. As a result, the, uh, the man will become like this. It's as if this, this has this is moving cost everything is moving cost velocity, everything is moving cost velocity. This has sudden change in the velocity. So it has increased. As the friction this has pushed, but the upper portion has the same velocity, so it backs. And this we observe always moves observe when the trace just changes its velocity. We, we feel as if we are being pushed backward. Means you you feel that a force this man thinks that someone has pushed him backward. It's not the someone has pushed, it's, it's inertia which tries to change, not to change its state. So it, <coughs> inertia tries to be in the same state. So this here feels a force, backward force. Similarly, uh, if the <coughs> train deaccelerates, means it's velocity, it, you apply brakes. So if you apply brakes, or suppose there is a pendulum here hanging, now if its velocity changes, this portion which is attached to the sheathing will move forward because the change in velocity. So this goes from here to here, but this has the same velocity, this has this has increased velocity e plus delta p, but this has only v velocity. As a result, this bob is left here. And this portion shift here, so the pendulum will like this. <coughs> now, now suppose this also, uh, if you apply brakes, due to the brake, this has a velocity v, everything has a velocity v, but now you have applied brake, means you, this, the, the, uh, the, the train has the velocity v minus delta v. So this portion, the lower portion of the body, has a velocity v minus delta v, but it has a velocity v greater. So, what we uh, feel that as if it, so everything has a velocity v, but this portion which touches the feet has a velocity v minus delta v. So, if this is moving the road, it has sudden, so this will go for like this because this is increased velocity, this is lesser velocity. So you have this we will, this we observe in moving train with the, the sudden break you will you will lean forward and as we, as the accelerates you lean backward. This all these are due to the inertia. <coughs> so these are some examples of inertia, uh, <coughs> and that's why uh, we feel tiredness on a bumpy road. Because every time you have to adjust your body, the muscle has to adjust. Because the, on the rough road, either the, it accelerates or decelerates. Accelerate, decelerates is always taking place. As a, if your body is moving either forward or backward, forward or backward, you have to adjust every time. Your muscle has to adjust yourself. That's why on the bumpy road, when you find that your body is aching, the whole body after journey. But if you are moving at a constant speed, you have not to adjust as, if, as we are moving a constant speed train. Our earth is also a kind of a very fast moving train, but we don't feel anything because it's moving with constant speed. If the speed of this train move, changes, and you must have uh, observed this change in your life sometimes, and that is on the earthquake, and that certain portion of the earth has it change in the velocity. Now suppose this is the portion of the earth. Everything is moving with constant velocity. 
but now some portion of the earth, this portion of the earth has a velocity either increase or decrease. So if this is a building here, if this earth was moving with velocity v, this building was also moving with velocity v, everything in this a man was also moving with velocity v. But now suppose this has an increased velocity, this portion of the has an increased velocity. So uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, the portion which touches the, which is attached to the ground will have the same speed, will have the speed v plus delta v but this has a velocity v. So if this has the increased velocity v plus delta v and this has a velocity v, so this whole thing will treat like this. So the building will treat like this. And this happens in earthquake. The sudden change a portion of the earth has shakes in some time v plus delta v this side or v minus delta v this side. So the building either goes this way or this way, this way or this way. And you, you will, this happens only in case of earthquake. Otherwise we don't feel any change, any motion. Because always we are sitting in a, although we are sitting in a very fast moving train, but we don't feel. So the, all these are the examples of uh, inertia of rest and motion. Now the uh, the third part of, uh, of this uh, Newton's first law statement, the first law was to understand rest and motion, and that the force, that physical quantity which produces any change in the inertia, that must be external, and this you can observe in whenever. Uh, suppose your bus or car uh, uh, gets snacks and not moving. If you push your seat inside, and if, suppose this is a uh, bus and everyone sitting in pushes seat in the front one of pushes here, and the man sitting here pushes his, this seat. And the man pushing here, will this straight bus moves? Obviously not. Now, if you all the three of them goes out of this bus and apply force here, the bus will move. So it means the it's the property of the body not to change its inertia, inertial state by itself. Inertia, inert. inert uh, uh, in, uh, the change in the inertia can be produced only by the force external force. Internal force cannot produce any change in the inertia. Internal force may be very, have a very large amount inside, but you cannot ch change the state. To, to change the state of the inertia, you have to force must be from outside, external force. So, th so this is the Newton's first law. First, Newton's first law basically defines the state. St st uh, rest and motion and defines force that, that is force is that physical quantity you can conclude that force is that physical quantity which produces a change in the inertia of a body. And we have already know that inertia can be of two types, either rest or motion. And that depends upon which one is that which one of motion. It depends upon the frame of reference from where you are observing the the <coughs> So this is about knots. Next is second law. So all about this about Newton's first law. Now Newton's second law, as we have already announced, second law, and we have just seen, according to Newton's first law that force is that physical quantity which produces a change in the inertia 
for the system. Now suppose I am shaking two, two balls and both are at rest relative to the earth, to the ground. Relative to the ground. This is the outside rest. This is the outside rest. And the observer is also on the observer is also on the ground. This is also on the both the balls are at rest. Suppose this ball is of made of steel, same ball, and this ball is of rubber. And according to them, both are at at rest. So it, it, this has a velocity zero. This has a velocity zero. Now both of them have already known the Newton's first law. It means you just according to first law the, the, the change in the inertia of this ball will be produced only by the external force. So both, both of them already studied Newton's first law, so they apply equal force. A and B both applied equal force. Same force applied by the they kick the ball, he also kicks the same by the same force. Okay. Now, <coughs> The change in the velocity of the rubber ball obviously will be more than the change in the velocity of the steel ball. It means the change in the inertia, both are at the inertia state of rest inertia, but the change in the inertia of this body is related to some quantity, some property of the rubber ball. And the change in the inertia or the rate of change in inertia of this steel ball is different from the rate of change. So we can say that the change in the inertia force is proportional to the rate of change in the Not equal but proportional. The change is not equal in both cases. Not in, in rubber and steel, both are not, not same. But we can say that it's, it's proportional, force is proportional to the now to change we we apply some constant here. Say that constant is known as M and this is into rate of change in the inertia. So we can also write a change rate of change inertia means suppose final velocity Bf Bf minus B initial by time taken. So this gives you the rate. And when m is a constant, is a constant of the body of the body and is and we can say it is a measure of inertia. The more the inert the body, the lesser the change. This is more inert, that's why right. the change the steel ball will be less than the rubber ball. Rubber ball is more agile than this steel ball, this is more lazy. So it's the measure of inertia. M M is a constant to the body and is known is a measure of the inertia. We call it by a name called we call it as mass. So, <coughs> so this is the beauty of the Newton's second law of motion that it, it relates two unknown quantities, two physical unknown quantities by one equation. This was unknown, this is unknown, only the change in velocity is known. 
that can be studied, change the velocity by time taken. But what is this? What is the mass? Newton's second law relates both two unknown quantities by one equation, and the and this is <coughs> this is called we call it mass and mass, which is actually the measure of the inertia of the bodies. In the, so, so if uh, sometimes this law, this can be done, this can also be written like if you can also be written like this f is equal to m times v final minus m times v initial by time. Now let us call m times v another physical quantities m times v. Now it's another physical quantity defined as momentum. So we can say that's the final momentum minus initial momentum by t. So the Newton's law now becomes final momentum minus initial momentum. Or in if we the momentum changes with time, continuously change. Means for every every short every smallest time momentum changes. So we can write it as uh, delta p by delta t supposing delta t tends to the for very small, shortest time there is a small change in momentum for, for a very short duration or in calculus notation this is written as f is equal to dt by now this uh, force is a vector quantity and so momentum is also a vector quantity, velocity is also a vector quantity, so this become momentum is also a vector quantity. So this is the statement of the Newton's second law. The rate of change in the momentum is equal to the applied force. So now <coughs> sometimes uh, if mass also varies with the time. Here in this case the rubber ball and steel ball mass remains inertia remains same. But if in certain case if the mass mass of the body also varies with time, then this can be written as F D by T and mass into velocity. Because both are varying with time. Mass of so if both if it is a product of two functions differentiated by time. So this will be written as first function dv by dt plus uh, v times dn by dt. Yes. change in rate of change of velocity by time times mass or velocity and rate of change of mass with time. So this occurs only when suppose sometimes uh, let suppose we have a balloon here and uh, there is a if you pick the balloon the air comes out from this balloon. It means the mass of the balloon is decreasing with constant rate. So this portion means dm by dt is changing, mass is changing with rate of time. As a result, this balloon will feel a force and balloon rises up. And this is the case of, also of the rocket. It, it's, its mass is changing as a result it gaining the force. So the force may, 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 may appear due to its change in the mass also as well as due to the change in the acceleration so usually if we take mass to be constant if we change mass to be constant then dm by dt is zero if mass is constant dm by dt is zero there is no change in the mass then our equation becomes f is equal to m 
dv by dt and dv by dt is the acceleration change in the velocity by time so it is the this is the equation for constant mass f is equal to m but the general uh, statement of Newton's second law motion is this one f is equal to dv by dt that is the rate of change in momentum is equal to the applied force so all this about uh, Newton's first law and second law the next lecture we will uh, see, uh, study the Newton's third law and how to apply Newton's law, laws of motion to uh, physical uh, or bodies okay thanks for today's lecture